This is a documentary of the French Revolution by myself, Isaac Garza, Brad Caponegro, Parrish McCurry, and Kira Stein. Brought to you by the letter W and the number 6. The French Revolution began in 1789 as a result of several factors. The majority of people were unsatisfied with the ancient regime, the old political and aristocratic system that had existed since the 15th century. This majority, otherwise known as the Third Estate, consisted of peasants, commoners, merchants, everyone that wasn't the clergy, the First Estate, or the nobility, the Second Estate. The three estates can be looked at almost like castes, with unequal treatment and wealth causing further division. Within the Third Estate, there existed an educated middle class known as the bourgeoisie. These merchants, traders, bankers, factory owners, and lawyers essentially led to the French Revolution because they felt that their overwhelming taxation, whilst the wealthier, more prosperous estates were hardly taxed at all, was unjust. They came to resent their French king, Louis the Sixteenth, and Queen Marie Antoinette. After raiding the French armory and prison known as the Bastille on June 14, 1789, the Third Estate called the National Assembly in order to draft a constitution three days later. When they arrived at Versailles, their agreed meeting place, they found the doors locked and were forced to delegate in the tennis court. The oath sworn by the creators of this new French constitution became known as the Oath of the Tennis Court. Later that year, on August 26th, the National Assembly adopted the Declaration of the Rights of Man and Citizen which was a charter of basic liberties and provided equal rights for all men. This was strongly based off of Enlightenment ideals and thought, as well as the U.S. Constitution, Declaration of Independence, and the Bill of Rights. During the Revolution, a political group known as the Jacobins was formed. It consisted of a Republican-ish group that advocated continental war, known as the Girondins, and the mountain, which represented the interests of radicals in the city of Paris, the two aforementioned parties had very opposing views and often conflicted. One of the vital turning points in the French Revolution was the March of Versailles, where a group of 7,000 people, consisting mostly of women, marched to the Palace of Versailles in October of 1789, after being enraged over the sharp increase in bread prices. The mob sang songs about killing the queen. The Duc de Fronsac quickly warned the king and queen of their deadly intentions. Regardless of his warning, the crowd still managed to break into the palace and eventually captured the king and queen. They were sent to Paris to live under the house arrest at Tuileries Place. Once the monarchy was overthrown, the National Convention, an assembly elected to provide a new constitution, was established to govern France in September 1792 and lasted until October 1795. France was now being governed by the First French Republic as a replacement to the monarchy. However, no matter how much they attempted to control it, the economy began to plummet. Riots spread, coups were common, and policy became considerably more radical. Soon after, in 1793, a lawyer named Maximilien Robespierre was put in control of the Committee of Public Safety. The events that took place over the course of 13 months are now known as the Reign of Terror. Approximately 40,000 people were executed on charges of counter-revolutionary activities, and roughly 17,000 were beheaded with a guillotine. During this time, Louis the Sixteenth, Marie Antoinette, the Girondins, uh, Louis Philip II, Duke of Orleans, and Madame Roland, as well as many others, lost their lives to the guillotine, which had been dubbed the National Razor. Even though there was growing discontent with the National Convention as a ruling body, they drafted the Constitution of 1793, which was also ratified by the popular vote in August. However, the Committee of Public Safety under Maximilian had grown too powerful, and he was again the renormalization called for by the National Convention. By the middle of 1794, there was, quote, a great deal of enthusiasm for the ending terror, but no one could figure out how to do it. 
The only thing that would end the terror, and apparently the only thing they could all agree upon, was the fall of Robespierre. He was executed without trial in 1794. After removing Robespierre, the National Convention adopted the Constitution of 1795, which among other things called for a new legislative body. On November 3, 1795, the Directory was established. The Directory consisted of an upper chamber called the Council of Elders with 250 members, a lower chamber of 500 called the Council of Five Hundreds, and an executive chamber of only five members called the Directory. This system only lasted approximately four years before disestablishing due to internal conflict and instability. The power of the Directory waned very quickly due to the French military disasters in 1798 and 99, essentially beginning the period known as the French Consulate. This started with a coup in 1799, with members of the Directory actually involved in the planning, showing how powerless the Directory really was. Napoleon Bonaparte was a co-conspirator and became the leader of the First Consul, a name he gave to the new government. During the next four to five years, Napoleon began his consolidation of power, signing important treaties while at the same time crushing internal opposition. He held near total power after the coup and controlled the army, influenced legislators, and appointed members of bureaucracy. In 1802, Napoleon was made First Consul for Life, with a national referendum and a rigged vote. Over the next two years, though he was technically in control, the Republicans, and most importantly, the military, viewed him as little more than a tyrant. And so, on December 2nd, 1804, under a coronation ceremony, Napoleon proclaimed himself the first emperor of the new French Empire. The First Republic was ended. The main events of the French Revolution not only affected nations externally, but also majorly influenced internal revolts and uprisings. In the French colony of Saint-Domingue, the population consisted mainly of white slave owners, enslaved Africans, and a small amount of hens de color, or free people of color. The French Revolution had been fought between groups of white people, or white people and free blacks. Enslaved Africans had yet to become involved in the fighting. The Haitian Revolution, which started in 1791, lasted for 13 years and was led by Francis Dominique Toussaint Louverture, ending in 1804, the same year that Napoleon became emperor. Haiti became the first society with emancipation of slavery in history, with Toussaint decreeing all slaves free in August of 1793. Napoleon's rule has been characterized by many historians as an era of nearly constant war. There was a time of peace following his coronation as ruling emperor, but it was extremely limited and lasted a very short amount of time. Through his rule, Napoleon waged several wars, such as the War of the Third Coalition against Austria and Russia, the War of the Fourth Coalition against Prussia, and the Peninsula War against Portugal and Spain. He was very victorious, however. His expanding confidence may have been his downfall. On June 23, 1812, regardless of several warnings from advisors, Napoleon commenced his invasion of the Russia heartland. The Russians tried to avoid direct conflict with the French armies, but decided to fight eventually. Several battles were fought, and although the French were victorious, their casualties were enormous. Napoleon's disastrous invasion of Russia was ultimately his downfall. After his grave mistake with Russia, his control began to dwindle as fighting persisted and turmoil was rampant. In September of 1814, the Congress of Vienna was established and was influenced by Prince Clemens von Metternich. Its objective was to settle the many issues arising from the French Revolutionary Wars and the Napoleonic Wars. The immediate background was France's defeat and surrender in May 1814, which brought an end to 25 years of nearly continuous war. The Congress was required to deal with Napoleon once more, when after he returned to the mainland from the island he'd be been exiled to, he managed to resume power for what's known today as the Hundred Days, between March and July of 1815. The Congress's final act was signed nine days before his final defeat at Waterloo on June 18, 1815.
We can check it. You can it. edit it, right? We need some more bloopers. All right, no. Okay. okay. <coughs> and everyone look at the camera. Go. <sighs> right. <laughs> what did I say? This is? Go. This is okay. Uh, you are watching... No. <laughs> okay, no, how about, okay, no, you're watching, exactly you're watching a, a you're document, okay. Uh, let's just... You're not using, you're watching. Wait, do not move the camera, though.